biggest product fails. Number 16, Zune. Released in November 2006, the Zune is an MP3 player that just never caught on. Microsoft tried using it to go up against the iPod and many other MP3 players, and it even had some features that the iPod did not. Yet, that wasn't enough to help keep the Zune going as Microsoft watched its revenue steadily decline. Today, it's ranking on Amazon at number 36, behind many other MP3 players deemed, well, better. It's speculated that the Zune's demise came in the form of iTunes, as the device is not compatible with the software that millions use on their computer. Number 15. MD Player. Mini discs were the brainchild of Sony that seemed doomed from the start. Initially developed in the late 1980s, MD players were aimed to combine the easy portability of the cassette tape with the magnetic optical technologies being used in the newly released CDs. MD players had a hard time even getting off of the ground as they were completely standalone devices, while CD players were being built into boomboxes and other devices. Ultimately, consumers went with products that allowed them to listen to their music on multiple different mediums on one machine. Record companies didn't even mass produce pre-recorded music for the devices. Sony also tried to avoid piracy by making the MDs impossible to use with a computer. We know today that CDs won the battle of most popular music medium, that is, until streaming and MP3s hit the market. Number 14 New Coke. In 1985, Coca-Cola pulled out all the stops for their product, New Coke. Seriously, they stopped production of the old recipe for Coca-Cola so that they could focus on their new, improved version. Their goal was to try and win back some of their customers who had turned to Pepsi for the company's sweeter tasting cola. Almost immediately, Coca-Cola saw sales drop and the public's reaction to the change in formula was negative and has even been called hostile. Three months after New Coke was introduced, Coca-Cola Classic hit the shelves, bringing back the old, familiar taste of the original Coke product. New Coke was discontinued entirely in 2002, and if Coca-Cola is smart, they'll keep it that way. Number 13. United States Football League. Dreamt up by David Dixon, an antique dealer from New Orleans, the USFL seemed like a great idea at the start, and it was, until Donald Trump got involved. The league initially secured players, sponsorships, and broadcasting deals to play in the NFL's off-season, playing during the spring and summer. It was launched in 1982, and 12 cities signed on. From the get-go, there were many problems, as many teams couldn't find permanent stadiums to play in, and a lot of those teams had to move cities, merge with others, or failed financially. Then, the final blow came when Mr. Trump urged owners to begin competing against teams from the NFL, which teams and players didn't like because they felt they didn't want to or couldn't stand up to the teams from the National Football League. Seven teams folded, leaving the playing field pretty scarce, and the USFL ended up calling it quits after the 1985 season. Number 12. I smell. Can you imagine logging onto your computer and pulling up the internet only to be met with a flood of different smells from different websites and emails? The Eye Smell by Digisense was designed to provide you with scents of all kinds when you accessed your computer. With cartridges that held 128 primary scents, the device would have mixed different combinations to come up with scents for various products. Although it never made its way past the prototype stage, we think that this thing would have been a nightmare to have hooked up to all the computers in an office. In 2006, PC Magazine named the I smell one of the 25 worst tech products of all time. Number 11, laser discs. These giant, clunky discs were released in 1978 and did their best to stand up against VHS tapes. In general, laser discs seemed the far better choice as they could hold extras, like the behind the scenes and outtakes that we all love, and they were organized into chapters, much like the DVD. One substantial problem laser discs had was the cost, as laser disc players cost far more than VCRs. They also took a hit when movie studios recorded far less material using the giant discs than they did onto VHS tapes. In 1998, reports came in that only 2% of households in the U.S. used laser discs, and then DVDs hit the market, rendering the awkward discs all but obsolete. Number 10. Newton. In 1993, Apple launched a device that they hoped would change the way that personal computing was done. They came out with the Message Pad, more commonly known by its nickname, the Newton. The software was handwritten and reportedly highly inaccurate, and the device went for $700 to $1,000. It was far too expensive and just didn't do what it was supposed to do, which led Apple to eventually discontinue the product in 1998. Number 9. Crystal Pepsi. 
Released in Europe in the early 1990s and the U.S. in 1992, Crystal Pepsi was meant to join in on the purity craze going on in the world. Marketed as a clear, caffeine-free alternative to regular colas, Crystal Pepsi turned out to be not a much better choice. Most didn't think that the drink tasted anything like cola, and more often than not, people couldn't seem to buy the idea of a clear cola. Two years after its launch, it was yanked from shelves and discontinued. In the end, Pepsi decided to go for another clear liquid to stay up with the times, good old water. Number 8. Euro Disneyland. Sometimes, too much hype can kill. That's what seems to have happened to Euro Disneyland in France. Just before the opening of this new Disney resort in 1992, media warned of chaos and disaster on the roads, stating that nearly 500,000 people would be trying to make it in for opening day. The sensational news reports more than likely deterred many from even trying to go on opening day. And only 25,000 people showed up. A month later, nearly 3,000 employees at Euro Disneyland up and quit their jobs. The park met its attendance goal of 11 million in the first year, but it had still suffered nearly a $1 billion loss. In 1995, the park was renamed Disneyland Paris and made a slight comeback. And the park is the most visited tourist attraction in Europe. Not so bad for such a wobbly start, although it is still around $2 billion in debt today. Number 7. Betamax Although pretty cool for the time, Betamax was introduced by Sony as the first ever home video recording tape in 1975. By 1976, JVC had introduced their VHS tapes, which ended up winning the battle of the most used recording material. But why? While Betamax allowed users to record up to an hour's worth of whatever they wanted, VHS allowed for double that amount of time, coming in at two hours. Sony was also slower to sell and license Betamax to manufacturers and refused to do business with the pornography industry. The final nail in the coffin probably came in 1977, when VHS tapes boosted their recording time to four hours, leaving Betamax in the dust. It took until 1988 for Sony to give up on their product, and at that time, Sony decided it was best for them to begin producing their own VHS tapes. Number 6. Colgate Kitchen Entrees There was a time when Colgate, yes, the toothpaste company, tried their hand in making food. Launched in 1982, the company hoped to jump on board the ever-growing frozen food craze and make delicious, ready-to-eat meals for their customers. Their goal was to make people enjoy their food and inspire them to then go out and buy their toothpaste as well. It turns out, most people don't like to associate the minty, fresh taste of their toothpaste with the taste of their food and the meals were quickly discontinued. Number 5. Smokeless Cigarettes This bad idea was first released to the public by R.J. Reynolds in 1988 and was pulled from shelves less than a year later. It was introduced to reduce or eliminate the less than savory side effects of cigarettes for smokers and the people around them. Almost immediately, activists pointed out that the cigarettes could be used in aiding the delivery of, well, other drugs. Smokers themselves also didn't like them, saying they had a charcoal aftertaste and there were even special instructions to teach people how to light them. While it was pulled from shelves in 1989, R.J. Reynolds tried their hand with the cigarettes in India in 2002, but by 2003, they were also removed. Number 4. Baby Wee Wee Back in the early 2000s, a super creepy kid's toy was released known as Baby Wee Wee. The doll waves his or her hand, letting the owner know that it has to use the bathroom. Keep in mind that the owners of these dolls were children, adding to the strangeness of the toy. Then, the doll urinates into a toilet or wherever it's standing or lying at the time. Designed by Famosa, the toy is no longer sold, but it can still be found on eBay. Number 3. E Villa. Sony seems to have bad luck with introducing new products from time to time, and the E Villa is no exception. Released in 2001, this internet appliance's sole purpose was to provide access to the internet. In a time where making personal computers that could do more than just access the World Wide Web was becoming cheaper, this product was a failure from the start. It cost $499, while desktop computers that could do a whole array of things were dropping to nearly that price. Just two months after the E Villa's release, it was pulled from the shelves. Sony was a good sport about it and offered everyone who had bought one their money back. Number 2. Cocaine. No, 
No, no, no, we're not talking about the drug here. We're talking about the energy drink. In September 2006, a Las Vegas company called Redux decided to try out an energy drink that not only turned heads, but eventually ended up being pulled from shelves. Cocaine was the name of the drink, and it was touted as containing three times as much caffeine as Red Bull. Retailers like 7-Eleven refused to sell the drink, and the FDA eventually stepped in, saying that the marketing of the product as a dietary supplement was illegal. Redux renamed the energy drink No Name for a brief period to continue selling it, and it is now back and being sold in the USA, Europe, and online. Number 1. Wow Chips Frito-Lay announced a new chip in 1998 that was fat-free and made with Olestra. The chips were called Wow, and if you're a fan of going to the bathroom, these chips would have been for you. The Olestra that the chips were made with resembled the fatty taste found in other potato chips, but it had one significant side effect. It made consumers run for the bathroom, as Olestra molecules are too large to be digested by the human body. In fact, if someone ate too many Wow chips, the snack acted like a laxative and gave them stomach cramps and diarrhea. The FDA did require a warning label to be added to the bag, but most didn't seem to take notice, instead chomping down the chips anyway. Frito-Lay eventually changed the name to Light, but the company ultimately discontinued their laxative chips. 